Hi everyone, my name is Andy, and today I'm going to walk you through a detailed explanation of how I set up my self journal. Now, before we get started, if you got to this video before watching the previous video, you're gonna to need to click that card on the top right, and that's gonna take you to the self journal video that says how to start off your 2020 self journal right. In that video, I share three key things that help you set up any journal at any time up with the right attitude and the right mentality to get those goals not only set, but get those goals met. You're gonna to wanna to watch that first before continuing on with this video. All right, so for those of you who've already watched that first video and you're here to see how we do the self journal with a little bit more detail, I wanna welcome you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'm gonna go through page by page how I've set up my journal and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about my attitude, my mentality, the things I'm thinking and why I'm doing certain things a specific way. Now, one quick disclaimer, uh, I know that we're all in a different position of life, uh, not only age, but stage and also what our professional requirements may be. Uh, as, as I know you watching this are experiencing too, you might have some of these goals you're gonna set for yourself that are milestone related to finances or to your personal health and fitness. It could be to losing weight. It could be to uh, saving money or investing money. It could be towards school and education. It could be relationally. It could be an advancement in your career. It could be sales metrics. So I understand that there's a lot of different things this could be. And today what I'm asking you to do is adopt what I'm saying I do for my journal into what that would translate to be in your life. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. You can put a comment and I'll respond or you can email me and I'd be happy to help you out. All right, so first things first, you know when you get a brand new self journal, and the very first pages are the result goal pages. And these three result goals are the big three things you're going to focus on accomplishing or making progress on in the brand new quarter. Now, at the very top, you see what that result goal is, and I'm gonna share this one, the first one with you. Uh, it's to get 500 subscribers on YouTube. Now that result goal is going to be supported by all of the things that are written below to promote the achievement of that milestone. So underneath that, uh, what I've written here is this end result is very important to me to achieve because it forces me to stay in front of the camera and pursue valuable opportunities to create meaningful content. Now, the result goal here is not only uh, numeric, but it also has to do with me taking action and putting myself to task. So I specifically aligned this result goal with a number that I want to achieve, but which requires me in order to take action to produce the content that that number would be achieved by. So I'm stacking a number of habit and behaviors into this thing because I know I need it. In all candid honesty, I can't just wake up and like hope that it's gonna happen. Now, for some people that might be the case, but for what I do on YouTube, it's not the case. So me having this set goal of trying to reach 500 subscribers in the first quarter uh, by the first quarter uh, of the year is helpful because it forces me to schedule into the following 13 weeks what content i'm going to make how often i'm going to make content what topics i should be talking about etc cetera, etc cetera. so below in the progress goals you see three different things it's get to 250 by the end of january to get to 330 by the end of february and reach 500 by the end of march now i'm giving myself the full quarter to achieve this because i want to give myself the full quarter to evaluate and assess what's working what's not working and how i can actually attain this goal along the way by measuring my success every single step along the way now in actions and tasks this is how i set it up progress goal number one i make all my actions and tasks number one, two, three, based on that number one, just like it says in the book, and, and I follow it to the T, and here's why, because it works. When I've done it this way in the past, and I've held to it, it absolutely works. So, based on progress goal number one, which is to get to 250 subscribers by the end of January, I have three things I need to do. I need to make two videos of my own per week. I need to schedule one hour per week for optimization, and I need to ask 25 people for them to watch a new video, like texting them or making a call or asking someone I work with or even um, fa friends and family members. I need to ask them personally to please watch the video and then to share it, of course, if it has quality content that they know someone else can benefit from. Now, all three of those things will help me get to 250 by the end of January. But let's go on to number two, uh, which was reaching 330 subscribers by the end of February. Now, 
In order to do that, I have to do items four, five, and six on this page, which is start scheduling one video per week with a subject to interview. This is me doing creative content with somebody else, not just me on camera. This may be someone I know who does something significant in the community, uh, is a business leader here in town, has an audience of their own, is willing to share the message that we're gonna craft together, something like that. Uh, the next thing is to do Facebook Live at five once per week. Now Live at five is this thing I do where at five o'clock in the afternoon, I go on Facebook Live for five minutes. So it's Live at five for five. And if I do that once per week, it gives me the responsibility of committing to putting that in my calendar and then going on Facebook with something to talk about so I'm not wasting your time and I'm actually thinking in advance what is it that's gonna be that I'm gonna talk about. And it's all pertaining to YouTube. A story I have that I've done that I think you'd be interested in but maybe you missed, Live at Five. Maybe a story I have coming up that you'll be excited to see in a week or two, I'll do that during Live in Five. Now, the last thing is target trending topics or things I know I can speak on that has keywords I can win. That will help me get from the 250 milestone to the 330 milestone by the end of February. Now, the last one I'm gonna do very quickly, which is reach 500 subs by the end of March. I just need to narrow the channel focus, remain consistent with my posting schedule, and then have consistency with the Andy and Jen talk about stuff videos. That's the set of videos that my wife and I have committed to make. Uh, started in 2019 and uh, committed to just talk about our life stories and things that we've learned along the way, things that we've done that we wish we had and things that we didn't do that we wish we had and our aspirations and goals for the future as well as lessons we've learned along the way. So uh, as Jen and I continue to make that, those videos, it helps to push creative content that's just authentic and genuine, real, based on our own life, being uh, married, being parents, being people that have been in business, being people that are creatives, been in and out of the music industry, and all of the things that come along with that. So this section of the video has been about how I set up the result goal in the first three pages of the Best Self Journal. You're gonna wanna do this for three separate big goals you have in your life and do it with detail and do it numerically. So you give yourself something to shoot for, Do some, give yourself something that you can actually achieve, something that's realistic and it's set to a time. These are called SMART goals. You'll read about this in the Best Self Journal support book. If you have not yet read it, you need to read that book. Now, if you go to page seven in your journal, it's seven on my journal. Uh, it's gonna say my commitment, where you write your name, I'm committed to finishing these goals by this certain date. When I achieve the goals, my life will be, uh, be it will improve in, in, in the following ways. And then what your, uh, what your reward is to yourself for meeting your target date. And then what things you're gonna do in order to achieve success and use your self journaling to accomplish these milestones. So you wanna fill that out and you wanna put pen to it. You wanna put your name and sign it. You're making this agreement with yourself. Now, depending on what you put in here, these goals may only be attributable, attributable to things that are good for you, but if they're relationally related, they're financially related, they help you and your family, your marriage, or the, the, the relationship that you're in, uh, you're making a strong commitment and there may be other people that are reliant on you succeeding along the way in order for not a, not only just that these things will be be achieved but they're relying on you to succeed in the steps you take in order to do that next thing in life that thing that you've set up as your goal so let's move on in the monthly overview i keep this very very simple uh, I simply just put the, the month of the name of the month at the top, I mark out the dates, and I just put big events. So that's like if me and my wife are gonna be out of town. Uh, any birthdays or anniversaries I have to remember. Uh, when the school uh, is closed for my kids. Uh, I'm not writing every single daily thing, there's just not room for that, and that's impractical for me to do that in two places. I just do big things like, oh, on that day, I need to remember that's the day that is my anniversary, is my wife's birthday, is my, my kids are off that, that day and it's spring break for the next two weeks, that kind of thing. So that's what you'll find when you look at my self journal for the three monthly calendars that are there. Now let's get into the habit and activity and weekly milestone tracking part of the self journal. Now this is the next 13 pages, which is week one through week 13 of you marching through the habits and behaviors you need to change or work on in order to support the progress goals that you wrote on the previous pages and then you layer all that inside the daily calendar of the pages that follow this 13 week planning area. So in this, what you're gonna see is the top left says weekly milestones. Now. 
I'm just trying to reduce this really big picture into what do I have to achieve this week? Let's make this into some bite-sized pieces because I can't do this all at once and I'm not just gonna like leap my way into a 13 week result on day two of this entire 90 day plan. So weekly milestones for me look something like this set up my uh, trading account online for how I'm gonna be doing my investing this year. Record two videos, which help support my YouTube objective. And then cleaning up uh, Mint to really understand how my money is spent. Mint is the personal financial tracking uh, software that I use online in order to look at our monthly budgeting, our spending, our trends, our habits, and where our money's going. Now. Uh, also in there, you're gonna see this Monday through Sunday uh, where you can put kind of bullet points and I put highlights in here. I put kind of things that were, were milestones that like I reached that day or things I just was like really reminiscent about like, oh, that was really cool or neat that that happened that day. And then over in the habit and activity area, this is where you're keeping score. And for me, I keep score on myself pretty hard because I set the standard high. Because if I set the standard low and I reach it, then I probably could have done a little more. If I set it high and I fall a little bit short, I still typically get a heck of a lot more done than if I didn't plan it at all. So here, I always write between three and five. I don't always have five habits or, or activities I'm doing, specifically because they change based on the goal, the result goals I set at the very front, and then what, how, what time is left in my week for me to actually do the things that I'm tracking. So in some of these instances, I'm only doing something four or five times a week, sometimes twice, like posting two videos a week, or making sure I write in my journal, especially at the beginning of the journal, I make sure I write in this journal seven days a week. And so those of you who are brand new to this, or maybe you uh, have used, this is your second, third, fourth, fifth journal, but you haven't written in it every day, make that one of your habits that you're gonna write in it every single day, and then put a check mark next to that day, every day that you complete it. Try, give that one a try, see how well you do. Now, what's the happiest event that happened during the week? Be honest about that. So we just, we spend so much time on all the things we want to change, want to correct. I mean, we have a whole journal of things that, uh, that we're going to write in here that's about things we're trying to achieve that we haven't yet, uh, haven't yet accomplished. So we need to take time to pause in our life and write down what was the thing that made us the happiest this week. And it may not even be quantifiable. It could just be that you had gre a great mental attitude for five out of seven days. Now, that's quantifiable because I just said five out of seven. I get that. But you're talking about your mental attitude. And if it is numeric, like mathematical or, or financial, then write it down. I made $1,000 more this week than I thought. Or uh, I, I was happy because I made 100 sales calls and I was only supposed to make 80. Whatever it is. Uh, and then your big three wins. Your big three wins are things where you look back and you go, man, that was a turning point. I really did that. That actually helped me catapult into the next thing, into the next thing. So big three wins, pull from your wins of the day. And we're gonna get to that when we get into the day by day list here in just a second. Now review your goals and assess your progress. How'd you spend your time this week and how will you improve next week? Now this is the time where you gotta look at yourself in the mirror and you gotta get honest. Well, did I achieve my goals or pass my goal or fall short of my goal? And then get real, like why, why not? Some, some weeks you're sick. Some weeks you just don't have enough fuel in the tank and you're gassed. Some weeks you bite off more than you can chew and you burn out. And some weeks you don't challenge yourself enough. One of the things that's been most helpful for me in doing this consecutively for a number of years now is I now know when I set up my journal what quantity and what volume of output I can expect from myself. So it's more realistic now when I review and assess my progress that I've done a pretty darn good job of, of reaching the progress goals I need to uh, and that there's not a lot of room for improvement. It's mostly for me about being consistent and sticking to the plan. I want to deviate from the plan, especially if I'm making progress sooner or faster than I thought I would. Man, I really want to just go faster or get ahead. I need to remind myself not to do that. That will impede progress at some point. It's happened to me. I promise it sucks. <laughs> so please don't need, you don't need to repeat that. There's a free lesson you can learn. And then the last thing, what's the biggest lesson you learned this week? Most times it's just one big lesson and sometimes it's two or three. Now what I found is that the more honest I've been about the lesson I've learned, the more it becomes ingrained and becomes rooted in what I carry forward into the next following weeks. So as you're going through this and you're talking about the biggest lesson you learned, um, get again, get real with yourself and be honest uh, about what lesson, what that lesson means to you and then spend time to come back to these and, and take a look.
Now that's a completed week. Let's take a turn to the page. And I'm gonna show you week two that I'm currently in now. And you'll see that there's some blanks in here. I'm still filling things out because, well, I'm recording this on a Wednesday and we're only three days into the seven day week. Now, what this does for me is it gives me an accurate depiction of how much progress I've made during the week and am I working at the pace and speed I need to in order to finish the week out strong and be able to accomplish the milestones that I've set out for myself. By taking a quick glance at this page, I can see really quickly a snapshot of where it is I'm making progress, losing progress, or maybe I am getting ahead just by default of having more time or getting things done quickly. So uh, that's what is helpful about having a current week in review as a snapshot. Now, when you turn the page and you get into the weeks that we haven't even gotten to on the calendar yet, week three, four, five, six, et cetera, you'll see that I still have my weekly milestones put in here. And these weekly milestones are generated from the first result goal pages, where result goals one, two, and three spit out the progress goals I need to make. And then that becomes the weekly milestones I need to hit in the following pages that you see me thumbing through here. So as you get to week eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, you see that every single one of those pages doesn't have any of the, uh, any of the other stuff filled out except for the milestones. And here's the reason why, especially when it gets to the habit and activity section, as I make progress throughout the year, and I've been honest about my assessment of what I've been happiest with, what my big wins were, uh, reviewing my goals and assessing my progress, I sometimes have habits that now just become part of me and I don't need to carry that habit on for 13 weeks. Sometimes when you start a habit, and you heard this, sometimes you, it only takes a couple weeks to get a habit before it becomes regular routine and that's the case for me, especially when I'm in this book every single day. So early on in the weeks one, two, and three, you might have the same habit for the first three weeks, like you know, getting up at 5 a.m. or making sure you drink 100 ounces of water, whatever it is. But at a certain point, most people cross that threshold and that line where that habit is just something you do and you need to have a new habit in place. What I tend to see for myself is I, as I get to the second half of these weekly plans and I get to weeks nine, 10, 11, I usually have a lot of good steam going, but I have to remain consistent. Discipline and the consistency is where I personally need to continue that habit. And that's actually sometimes what I write in here is like be disciplined and stick into the plan. <laughs> and how many days did I do that? And then I put a check next to it. So uh, just know that you can't fill this the whole thing out in advance. You're doing some future planning, some future pacing, um, but you know, leave yourself some flexibility is the point. Leave some flexibility and some space for you to be able to change habits and activities as you move through the quarter and you develop and make progress, you're gonna, you're gonna identify that there's some things that you might actually not even need to keep as habits or activities you need to change moving forward. So real quickly, let's take a look at a couple of the day-by-day -day pages and I'm just gonna talk to you real quick about how I set this up. So first things first is when I'm planning for any week that's coming up, I'm always planning Monday through Sunday and I do this on Sunday. So on Sunday, I always plan out what it is my next seven days need to look like so I can kind of mentally frame it, I can get myself prepared, and I can write in any of the things that have changed in my life and my schedule over the last few days uh, so I don't have uh, a bunch of just marks in my book that are gonna end up being moved, deleted, scratched out, whatever. Now, for me personally, Anything that is work related, that's connected to me on a project, connected to me to my main job, connected to things that I am responsible for providing for someone else for work reasons, I put a solid box around that time block time that I'm working on that thing. Now, anytime where I'm doing something for myself, I'm doing something outside of the office, I'm doing something for fun, I'm typically just putting a dashed box around that just to identify that this is non-work related, but it's still time blocked for myself. Now at the bottom of the page, you'll see that it asks you for three things that you're grateful for. And there's two ways to do this. You can write three things that you're grateful for that are all different, or three reasons you're grateful for one thing. So it could be three reasons I'm grateful for my wife, Jen. Or it could be, I'm really grateful for my wife, Jen, and her getting up this morning and making breakfast for us as a whole family. I was glad to sit, and then the second thing is I'm glad to sit at the table with my kids and have breakfast before we went to school. And then third thing is, you know, I'm grateful that I had an awesome conversation with my oldest daughter on my way to drop her off at high school. Uh, so so that, that's an example of both those right there. 
Now, uh, on the right hand side, it has my goal. That could be my goal for the day. It could be things as simple as like, don't cuss. It could be drink 100 ounces of water. It could be get your butt up and walk every hour and a half for one minute. Whatever that goes, just make a goal and connect it back to the thing that you've set up in your result goals so that it's consistent and it's kind of thematically consistent with what it is you're trying to achieve. Your today's targets should be a complement of what is in your week one, week two, or week three uh, milestone planning that you did on the previous pages. And then your lessons learned, your wins, and tonight you're grateful for are all things you do in reflection time during the day. Now here's what I'm gonna tell you. Take your time. This is a really big deal. I don't wanna overstate this, but take your time when you're doing this. It's real easy to just like write something to fill in the blank and look like you accomplished it. But if you put words on the page and they have no meaning or there's no purpose, Honestly, what is the value of that? So give yourself 15, 20, 30, maybe 45 minutes if you need it to really just sit, pause, and stop and reflect on your day. Now, in your pages, it's gonna have tasks and it's gonna have things you did and places you went, meetings you attended, classes you did, whatever it is that you're specifically doing. And just give yourself time to go, okay, I accomplished all these things or I did all these tasks, but what was the lesson I drew from that? How does that make me feel? What, what am I winning about today? And what am I grateful for? Now that I'm now knowing all this, now going through say, what is it I'm grateful for? And, and finish that, just, just finish that because you're gonna be really grateful when you finish a whole quarter and you go back and you look at day by day by day and you get to see all the things you forgot about. And I'm saying that firsthand because there's so many cool things that I go back and I read and I go, oh my gosh, I forgot that happened or I forgot it made me feel that way or oh yeah, there's that lesson I learned. You know, that's right, I, 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 need, to, I need to redeploy that in my life or in my work situation. So write it down because you can't expect your memory to remember everything amongst all the things you've written down, all the goals, all the appointments, all the plans, all the work, emails, texts, social media, the, all that stuff, you, you gotta, you gotta give your mind a break, and, and especially when it's important stuff, write it down here so you're not expecting your mind to remember it, and you can always go back and reflect at it. Now, this has been an extensive conversation about how I set up my self journal. I'm hoping that uh, by doing this, you have found some nuggets of knowledge in here that are useful for you and that are helpful in you setting up your self journal for success. Um, and also, you know, at any point where you go, oh, Andy, you went, you went too fast in that part, you can just rewind the video and go to a certain section. There are time markers in the description box here, so you can actually just jump straight to the section of the video that you wanted to go watch again. And as always, I'm always happy to help. So you can comment here, you can direct message me or send me an email, and I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, remember that when you're doing your first self journal, you just gotta stay consistent and do as best you can. If you're doing your second, third, or fourth, you're in progress zone. You're trying to maximize and scale and optimize the use of the journal. And if you've been in this journal for two years, three years, four years like I have, then I encourage you to make a video like this. I want you to step out and I want you to share with the rest of us how it is you're using your journal to achieve success and what kind of outcomes and results you've had change in your life as a result of discipline and consistent self-journaling. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll bring more self-journal content to you guys as it comes up and as I learn new ways to use this journal effectively. I really appreciate you, appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you again soon.